What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Back with my original segment, Ego Weight Watchers. If you're new to the channel, what Weight Watchers is, is just like the title suggests, I give you a sneak peek into the lifestyle of these fighters, especially if they have a fight coming up. Now, one man who does have a fight coming up is welterweight Special K, Kell Brook. And he's jumping up two weight classes to take on the monster Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. And he did a recent interview with Sky Sports. I'm going to open up with that. You will see some current pictures of Kell Brook, who is training. He always has some pretty cool-looking, intense training, kind of like that Ivan Drago type of training where he's doing all types of stuff and oxygen mask. And he is a big welterweight, which we're going to get to that aspect. But let me speak with this interview he did with Sky Sports regarding how he believes he'll fare at middleweight and his experience. Kell Brook says, if you ask any of my sparring partners, when I get down to that natural weight of 160 pounds, I'm a beast. I'm a different animal. When I'm a middleweight in training, I'm a different animal. What it takes for me to get down to 147 pounds is really hard. Anyone who knows me will tell you. He also says, I'm going to be frightening on fight night. As crazy as it sounds, I'm looking forward to feeling his power, referring to Gennady Golovkin. I just can't wait to get in. We're making history in this fight. Nobody at 147 will step in with me, or if they're talking, they're pricing themselves out. Now, that last part, real quick, I don't agree with it. I spoke to Errol Spence Jr., and he sounded down to fight you. My brother. Tell me three people you'd like to fight next. Three people. Uh, went out of Kell Brook, Jason Vargas. Went out of Sean Porter, Keith Thurman. Garcia. Okay, you and Kell Brook, how fast do you knock them out? I don't know. Uh, maybe in, in six, six rounds. Mike, what do you think? Six rounds or less? Like? I think three. What do you think? <laughs> What do you think? Oh, I'm gonna think they're gonna handle this boy's body shots, man. What he can do, man. It all depends how long they can take that. And him knowing his position and just speaking with him, even off the record stuff that we talked about. I don't think he would be pricing himself out. I think he realizes that he's not a champion and he wants those opportunities with the big names, whether it be it Danny Garcia, Kell Brook, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, winner, things like that. And that's what he told me. So I, I highly doubt that he would all of a sudden have quote unquote diva demands knowing he's not a champion and that he's still growing and building his resume to not fight Kill Brook. Every interview I've heard, even this post fight after he destroyed Chris Algieri, something Ruslan Provodnikov and Manny Pacquiao were unable to do after he stopped and destroyed. Well, Pacquiao destroyed him, but he didn't stop him. And same thing with Ruslan. He did good in the first half and then he kind of got out boxed. But bottom line is everything Errol Spence Jr. has stated shows that he wants the Kill Brook fight. So I don't know what Kill Brook's talking about. He can't get a fight at 147. Keith Thurman. I've also heard him say he would fight Kell Brook in the UK. And I don't remember hearing Eddie Hearn or Kell Brook say of any failed negotiations where Keith Thurman priced himself out. So a lot of people just say this whole oh, Broner priced himself out. How much are you offering him to fight Pacquiao? You know what I mean? How much are you offering Keith Thurman to fight Kell Brook or an Errol Spence Jr.? Because no one's going to get lowballed, but this whole pricing themselves out seems all too convenient. But I'm not going to speculate because I don't even know if they negotiated with guys like Errol Spence Jr. in deep negotiations or Keith Thurman. But I want to talk about these pictures and then him saying I'm a beast, a different animal, a middleweight. Now, that's what he's saying is true. He is a big welterweight. But being a big welterweight does not make you a middleweight. And that's customary, what he's saying about in training camp, he feels great. And then having to lose, I talk to fighters all the time. Troy King is an excellent resource for when it comes to boxing and, and giving the fighter experience. I've done tons of videos with him and talked to him on the air, off the air about different things about the fighter experience. Cutting weight and losing those last four or five pounds, sometimes two pounds, things like that. And what Kell Brook is saying is customary. When you're sparring at a heavier weight, you feel good. Guys like Canelo, they feel good, feel comfortable, and then they may have to struggle a little bit to cut weight. With boxers, that's one of the things and one of the reasons I like boxing because there's no other experience, another sport like it. What these fighters do to their bodies, the flexibility, getting knocked out and then taking a tough fight right after. 
nothing duplicates boxing. So what he's saying is pretty standard. I can't speak on what he looks like in sparring because I'm not there. However, I've heard tales and people like Shane Mosley say one of his guys that he is coaching or mentoring or whatever hurt Kell Brook in sparring. So I can't really say yay or nay to anybody's story. Maybe he is good at middleweight in sparring. But the difference is sparring, you have headgear. Sparring, I don't even know who you're sparring. But Golovkin comes with a lot of experience. He knows how to get to you and infuse his style upon you and inflict pain and power. So it's different with no headgear, with, you know what I mean? Because I've heard sparring sessions like they said Robert Guerrero rocked Pacquiao way back in the day. And from Ruben Guerrero, what he was saying is they ended the sparring session like cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it off. And I've seen and heard about different things like that, even at Virgil Hunter's gym or whatever gym right that's customary like you don't want your fighter to lose confidence so that's the difference between sparring in sparring you could actually call it off but behind the bright lights in a real fight if someone's getting whooped and you don't want to hurt their confidence the only way to call it off so to speak is if the ref intervenes or if you throw in the towel which is completely different so i can't really vouch to say yay or nay to how kill brook looks in sparring he says, I'm a beast, a different animal when I'm a middleweight. I'm sure he feels more comfortable, but again, it's different, especially because I guarantee you his sparring partners with headgear, none of them probably packs the punch that Golovkin has, is a champion or the same pedigree of a Golovkin. So it's kind of hard to, to state and compare what you do in sparring to what I've seen guys that look great in sparring. I'm not going to say any names because I don't have to... to um, put anyone on blast i've seen people look great in sparring they said they were ready they said canelo when he was preparing for the mayweather fight go back and look the articles i cover boxing so i remember i cover stuff like this they said canelo was knocking out all of his sparring partners or they couldn't keep guys around because they were getting destroyed one by one they had to bring in bigger guys and all this stuff but what happened when he stepped foot on that canvas against floyd mayweather all of that disappeared and again i said this before Kell Brook, to me, is a quality fighter. I think he is one of the best welterweights. But a lot of that is more so my personal thoughts on his style being matched with other people's style and less on what he's actually proven. Because as I said time and time again, that Kell Brook still has more to prove at welterweight. Because ever since Sean Porter, he hasn't fought anyone who we consider to be an elite level current welterweight. And that's real. And Sean Porter was the last person. So I'm hearing a bunch of people who are saying things like, oh, this is way different than Canelo versus Khan because Canelo is bigger and he's fighting Khan and he has a no chin and Kell Brook has a much better chin. I personally think Kell Brook's chin is probably better than Amir Khan's. However, we don't know because Amir Khan has a better resume. You know what I mean? Amir Khan got flattened by Bradis Prescott when he was early in his career. He was young and probably feeling himself. He got flattened by him. He also got flattened by Danny Garcia, Canelo. I mean, we don't know because Kell Brook hasn't fought Danny Garcia. His toughest fighter, the best level, the best name on his resume is Sean Porter, which was a competitive fight where he clearly won, right? So we don't know. Had he fought the, the Keith Thurmans, the Errol Spence Jr., Danny Garcia, we don't know how good his chin are. Those guys can chin, chin check you or test you. So is, the people saying this, he has a much better chin. Yeah, we think, but that's the thing with it. Hey, we think he might be the best welterweight based on what we've seen, but we still have to see it at a high level. Same thing with Golovkin. The middleweight division is not packed. I think he's the best middleweight, but I still wouldn't be opposed to seeing him against Billy Joe Saunders, Chris Eubank Jr., or Danny Jacobs. Those fights would solidify him as that position. The problem with boxing is people want to give you the credit before you turn in the assignment. It's not how it works. You know what I mean? Kell Brook, I think he has a better chin than Amir Khan, but we don't really know that until he fights the guys that, that Khan fought or that quality of opposition. You know what I mean? That's what people are forgetting. And people keep coming up with these historic examples of Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvin Hagler jumping up in weight. Sugar Ray Leonard, if you know boxing, was on a layoff. So we don't even know how much he was weighing in his offseason because he was, quote unquote, retired on that layoff. Furthermore, the more important thing is Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, before they fought each other, they had done damage in the boxing world. They, we knew Sugar Ray Leonard was considered pound for pound great. 
Same thing with Hagler. They had fights with Roberto Duran, Tommy Hearns, you know, the Fantastic Four, like everybody. So it, it's like Sugar Ray had already fought the Terry Norris's of the world and Hagler had fights with Mugabe and it's, they already proved themselves. Triple G, we still, who's his Tommy Hearns? David Lemieux, a guy who got stopped by Marco Antonio Rubio, right? Another guy that Triple G stopped. Who's Kel Brooks? Roberto Duran, Hands of Stone. You know what I mean? Sean Porter. I guess that's the that's the closest that you would you could compare. So these these people aren't even coming up with apples and apples type argument. It's all stuff that's way off the mark. You know what I mean? Historic examples. We're talking about proven guys jumping up. And if that was the case with Kell Brook, you wouldn't see these videos because I wouldn't really care. If Kell Brook beat Errol Spence Jr. and Danny Garcia, Errol Spence Jr. and Keith Thurman, or fought and beat Pacquiao and another sturdy name at welterweight and then he decided to move up i wouldn't have a problem with this fight i'd be like okay that's fine because he's already proven his worth at welterweight but a guy who has like one fight at 155 then went back to welterweight and that's where he's been his whole career and his career there hasn't been necessarily the best names and so basically you haven't even cleaned house like look at andre ward andre ward clean house aside from some new emerging talent like Gilberto Ramirez or James DeGale or Badu Jack but he had been the dominant man at 168 for quite some time right so him moving up to light heavyweight I have no problem a lot of people put Andre Ward number one pound for pound after Floyd Mayweather retired he was number two for a long time and the only reason that some people might have taken him off was inactivity which is no longer the case because he's back fighting he just fought Barrera in March and I was at that fight live, right? So that's not the case with Kell Brook or Golovkin, you know what I mean? They still have more to prove, especially like Kell Brook because he's the one making the plunge up. So he has to prove to me, if he had proven to me that without a shadow of a doubt, he is the best welterweight and then wanted to take the risk, that's fine. But I firmly do not know if he would beat an Errol Spence Jr. or Keith Thurman who are the other guys that are considered, or even a Danny Garcia, we don't know, because the only guy he's beat was really Sean Porter, Sinchenko, I mean, come on. Last thing I want to say is, uh, funny thing is this, when it comes to this particular fight, people say, oh, you're racist, Ego, you're racist, and they're going to say whatever to try to defend things, you're racist, but what do you say, it's funny how I always become the one that's quote-unquote racist even though i didn't say anything race related i just don't approve of a certain fight but there's an interview on fight hub i'll put the link in the description and it's with roberto garcia of oxnard the title of the video is triple g versus kell brook is a worse mismatch than canelo versus khan so is robert garcia is he racist paulie malinaji adrian broner bob arum deontay wilder all these people and I'm sure I'm forgetting people have mentioned this fight as being a mismatch or hypocritical for this fight Golovkin Brook to happen. So you're just going to point the finger and we must all be racist because we're all saying the same thing. Triple G versus Kell Brook is not the fight. That's why people were so caught off guard by it, right? So people, they're going to try to deflect and say you're racist, but if I'm racist, you got to show me what I said that was racist. And you got to call everybody a racist. Bob Arum, Roberto Garcia. And again, the link's in the description. That's the title of the video. Triple G versus Kill Brook is a worse mismatch than Canelo versus Khan. And shout out to Fight Hub. Make sure you guys subscribe to them. But they said the same thing. So it's not going to just fall on my shoulders where, oh, Ego, you're racist. No, it doesn't work like that. Checkmate. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you drop it in the comment section. Will Kell Brook be a better middleweight? as he suggests and is anyone picking kill bro drop that in the comment section make sure you like my video as always hate comment and subscribe till next video is ego signing off not respect to boxing no not respect to fans and last fight with can you know the two division down two division down two division down two division down this is not respect this is business fight we need like true middle with fighter yeah what about Kel Brook Kel Brook he said 157 he'll fight you I think he's too small too small know, too small yeah you know my focus on 160 middle division right now Kelly Brook or everybody just trash talk you know? so if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel 
you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing. Yeah.